do we know how all the, all of those megafauna died? Because it's interesting how in North America there's no more megafauna, but in Africa there is. I don't. I've heard different theories about it. I don't yeah. know what the current thinking is, but it, it. I don't think it's any coincidence. It's about the same time that people showed up. Mm. You know, because humans were first coming by water and coming across the land bridge, first showing up on the fossil record in that twelve, thirteen thousand years ago, about the same time mm -hmm. that they went extinct. But it's also the end of the ice age. And so that's when the glaciers started receding yep. and the climate changed. So it's, it's a, you know, it probably, it probably wouldn't be hospitable for a giant furry elephant to live in Florida in this climate. If it was like a rapid climate, like a <laughs> right. rapid change and so, right. Have so you I'm not sure how fast that happened, but, um, but I do know that people in hunting were a new presence on the landscape starting yeah. then too. Have you heard of the uh, younger Dryas impact hypothesis? Mm -mm. <clears throat> it's this theory that um, geologists and some geologists and climate scientists have come up with that uh, basically around 11,000, 12,000 years ago that there was some sort of um, uh, comet, series of comet impacts they called the younger Dryas that happened for um, about a thousand year period between 11 and 12,000 years ago. And they think they've found evidence of these cosmic impacts in the, the, the ground layer. They found this black matte layer in the ground that they ha has like nano diamonds and specific um, elements that would come from comets. <clears throat> uh, as well as like giant pieces of rocks that were from the northeast north american ice sheet that would have been like in the northeast above new york yeah. um toronto area jo like like i'm talking like 10 ton boulders that they found in the midwest like near um like washington that kind of area and the hypothesis <laughs> is this is just part of their hypothesis is that if this hypothetical co comet impact happened it would have like hit the ice sheet uh sent water flooding through the North American continent and it would have ha had ice chunks that had giant rocks in them that would have washed across the continent, could have gone all the way across the continent and then melted in those rocks could have settled there. Um, but yeah, it, I don't know. I mean, it, make, it makes sense. I mean, those, <clears throat> I know a little bit about the, at the Cambrian Cretaceous boundary with the extinction of the dinosaurs and the massive asteroid that, yeah. crushed into the Yucatan around right. that time. And um, the chief scientist at National Geographic now, Ian Miller, was like a paleo expert. And he was explaining to me kind of what happened in the world when that thing hit. Uh -huh. And he said, I, I might not get this all right, but the gist of it is all these things had to happen. Like normally the gravitational field of Jupiter protects the earth right. from yep. all these comets and other asteroids. So it's just like a somehow snuck through this asteroid belt and came crushing into the earth. But when it hit, it collapsed the entire, it would have collapsed the entire atmosphere of the earth to touch the surface. It, it would have hit and liquefied the surface and the crust when it, and it would have made a, an explosion backwards. Like when you drop, a rock into a puddle of water and the water bounces up, mm -hmm. that refractive bounce back would have been three times the size of Mount Everest. Oh my God. And a fireball would have raced across the continent that would have hit like Montana within three minutes. So just literally scorched the earth and, oh and up uplifted, I mean, he says you can see it now. You see how the cenotes and all these amazing things around mm -hmm. Cancun. It's like the underground limestone got folded upwards. From... Find a picture of the cenotes in the uh, Yucatan, Steve. <clears throat> They're incredible. So yeah, I mean, if you know, you know that you basically re pressed reset for the planet with that particular meteor, and, and you know, doesn't surprise me if a comet snuck its way through that you'd have boulders going across all of North America. Right, right. But it's interesting, it, it like- could, It could have wiped out all those species too, or contributed to it. Sure, sure. 
This is the uh, yeah. This is in the Yucatan. Is this uh? There's like these underwater things that you can. Is that what they're called? The cenotes when you're when you're diving in the Yucatan and you see these like honeycomb structures everywhere underwater. There, these are freshwater, but they come in. They interface, okay. and it's. I mean, Florida has the highest concentration of freshwater springs in the world, and right? So we have a similar kind of karst geology, but there mm -hmm. it's has you know different and has this history with the meteor impact that right. changes the structure of a lot of it. Now, do we know like what happened to that that asteroid when it hit the Yucatan? Did it like go underwater, under the ground, or did it like just disintegrate into a million pieces? Or like, is there any remnants of it? Like, and when do we, when did we actually come up with that theory that it hit the Yucatan? I think they've kind of pinpointed where it was. Right. Um, I I don't know exactly. I mean, yeah. I've I've heard about it across <clears throat> my adult life, but I don't right. know when it was. It was. Kind of I, heard, I think it was relatively recent that we actually discovered that it hit the Yucatan. Yeah, and, yeah, it was and, like in the forties, I think. Forties, and they know they know where it is, and I think they can measure where it is. Yeah. it's um. But dude, Steve, so I want to show you this real quick. So check out the uh, the Midwest Scablands, the uh, the Scablands that Randall Carlson talks about. So in his younger Dryas impact hypothesis, he believes that the North American ice sheet was hit by comets, and it basically unlocked this this biblical flood where he thinks like millions of tons of water were rushing through these scab yeah top left go to the top left the washington scab land so yeah blow that up he thinks that basically the millions of volumetric tons of water were rushing through the scab and channeling out these areas in the um in the western part of the the north america north american continent um and he, he does this incredible uh, presentation of like how he believes it all happened and in what series. And it's uh, it's super compelling. Combined with the fact that they did the black mat, they they cut into the earth and found that black la mat layer of the nano diamond particles and the other elements that would have been in those comets, um, corroborating the time that this would have happened. It's just fascinating. It's so interesting. I, yeah. I don't know nearly as much about the rest of the country as I do Florida, right. but, but it, it makes sense. Yeah, no, it, to it totally does. But like, you know, just going back to, to Florida, to, to before all those uh, ice sheets melted, how wide and how far it went out into the Gulf is, is insane to me. And it shows you how much, how much things change yeah. over time. I mean, you know, the, the, the sea is rising now probably from our carbon and other impacts but mm. it's not the first time it's risen or right. gone down right yeah but it, it's been know, a roller coaster but it you know whether it's whether it's happening faster than species can adapt to it that's a know, problem and the way we've hardened the landscape you know it's not like the you know if the sea rises the marsh grasses would shift back the mangroves would shift back the pines would shift back everything would kind of like move itself gradually uphill uh -huh. well we haven't left that option for much of the coastline i mean we've left it best like a few feet before you hit the seawall <laughs> you know it's and, and then it's so there are still places north of tampa along this area we're calling the wilderness coast where you still have room for nature to adapt you still mm -hmm. have enough grow open space and green space around the swanee river around these different river mouths where you know you see you see the palm trees dying off in chazowitzka you see the saltwater intrusion the evidence of the sea rising but if you give nature enough space those ecosystems can kind of sh go up the hill mm -hmm. and reappear up the gradient and still sustain the diversity of life and food and biodiversity that's there. Mm. <laughs>